you're on the dock with Pastor Troy here. We're ready to go with new releases every Tuesday and Thursday. And we are all about conversation to propel your faith out of the shallows and into the deep. It's going to be great, 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 great. You can catch us as you are already where you found us. But we're on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes. If you don't know that, Google Play, Facebook, Roku, Rumble, and SermonNet are auxiliary channels. You can find our entire On the Dock history on SermonNet, also on YouTube. You can find those on those others as well. But we'd really like you to be on YouTube. It's subscribe, like, notify, on, and all those things on Spotify, iTunes, uh, all those. Just tell me you like us and make comments and they get excited about it. So uh, share this with other people like contagion. You, you, you probably gave somebody COVID. You gave somebody a virus or bug. Give somebody on the dock. And this will be a blessing, not a curse. So get out and do that. Help us do that and, uh, and share the show. Uh, go to my Patreon. We're going to, that's our, our big emphasis this year is to you to download the Patreon app. And download that app, then go find On the Dock with Pastor Troy. You'll see my beautiful dressage on that page. And you can find out about how you can be a part of us. I want to challenge you, if you're enjoying our shows, I'd like to challenge you to get out there and find out there are four ways you can partner with us, four different tiers that you can partner with. You can give us five bucks a month, 10 bucks a month. Uh, you can really spend 20 and you just love us. Give us 50 bucks a month. We won't waste that. We won't go out to Pizza Hut. We will buy new equipment and new stuff, and we'll make our tech people really happy, and um, we will uh, keep upgrading the show for you. There's three ways you could sponsor, too. you got a business, a Christian organization. You want us to talk about you, connect with you. Uh, we have sponsorship with three tiers, and those are $50 a month, $100 a month, and 200 and we will wear you out. We will put people in your place. And, we, you know, it's one of those sponsorship includes us doing a show with you. So check those out. Go to my Patreon, and you can become a partner or sponsor with us. We'd love to have you as we jump into season three. Three. And we're at on the doc.org. That's our website. You can find out all this stuff there. Links are there. Info at on the doc.org is our email. You can email our amazing executive, executive producer, Donna Kronewski. I'm going to say her name right. Kronewski. Kronewski. I know. I, gotta, I was going to work on the right way today. I think Kronowski sounds a lot better. I do too. I know. We're going to talk to her about when she gets here. She's no, late. I've talked to her about it. Yeah, I know. She's coming. Uh, Donna, you, well, you'll see Donna in a minute. Donna's going to be on the show. Donna's helping us m much more. going to be a part of this series, and she had something going on. She's going to be rolling here. We're going to say, come on in, Donna, sit down. You know, in a minute, she'll be here. But in the meantime, email her. Ask her how to pronounce her name. Just email her at info at on the doc.org. And we have new, new pictures. There's my new dressage. What? Glasses right. free. You like that? I what like is it. a dressage? Dressage is your face, your 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 appearance, your dressage. Okay. Uh, like a bust, but it's your dressage. Sure. You don't know what dressage you, you didn't Isn't have. Isn't that handsome? I got MUS education. It, I mean, yeah, look at this. Look at this. Mother Beth, my lovely co-host right there. Got her, got her own selfie going on. You know it's a selfie. You see her arms are out. You know, she's reaching. And then I could decide that we got a new couple's photo. Look uh, at that. Oh, yeah. Lucas, we're going to shoot a new Lucas, one. We're supposed to shoot Lucas your new one today same. and replace it. But this is Lucas's old one. This is when Lucas was. a good picture. No, no, no. Though, but it's not. it doesn't represent Lucas. He doesn't look that much different. But in this picture, he's single. Yes. And <laughs> the new picture, he'll be a married man. So, yes. so we'll have to get the new married look because you need to see, you need to see the before and the after. There. We need the glow you know? while it's still yeah, there. Yeah, why there? And then who's <laughs> changed the most? Well, we're we're not, we're not we, we'll introduce her when she comes in. We will just wait because I don't want to. I want to make fun right to her face. I want to talk to her about it right to her face. But we've got Colt. Hi, Colt. Because Tosca, hey, Colt, we that's gave you the title of Tech Ninja. Thank you. You got it. That's your title is Tech Ninja. That's an awesome picture. Tech Ninja. Now you're on a mic. Let's see. Let's hear his voice. Can can we hear you? Hello. Okay. He is over behind the thing. L Lucas is training him. Lucas is in the room, kind of working with him. He's on camera, and Lucas is getting Colt ready to be our new guy. Hey, hey Lucas. <laughs> see, that's the that's the married Lucas. There you go. He looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Just peeking around the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's training Colt. Uh, as Colt gets better, he'll jump in one of the seats here maybe later. Uh, we're also training Donna to work the board, so we're just spreading it out. Once a man gets married, you can't, you know, his wife might have chores for him to do, so we have to get some backups. Colt's yeah. single now. We can abuse him. <laughs> so, so no, we got Colt. Now, here's what I want to know, though. What's that? Where's our picture of Matthew Perry? We're not doing a tribute to Matthew Perry. Well, everybody else is. I you're, dating we, our, you're dating our first. I thought we should have a moment of silence. Okay. Everybody, hang on. Let me, let me, I got to find, <laughs> I gotta, let, me, let me find a static slide. Here's a static slide. Can we take 15 seconds and we're going to, 
We're going to reflect on the life of Matthew Perry, our friend. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for the life of Matthew Perry, and we are sorry he died tragically, but we are glad that he got to know you, and uh, he, he's with you. So we, 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 we will miss our friend, but those of us that know Jesus, we will meet our friends again. And so there you go. There you go. Is that are that you was very nice, honey. Yes, it was. We did. Yeah, my, really my wife is watching the entire laugh. friend series from the beginning in honor of them. Yeah, everybody never, is, and she's bought merchandise. I've she's never, made us yeah. buy everybody. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. They won't hear this till after Christmas is over. This is not. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, we're in a new series in season three. Welcome to season three. So we have these all these new photos. Okay, hold hold on. Yeah, to, go ahead. To be fair. Yeah. Um. You have bought so many Steelers things that I think it's okay. <laughs> you think it's okay to that, have a friend's shirt? Yeah, that, that she can buy some friend's merchandise. Okay. I, I just wanted to say that for better. <laughs> hey, can I say this? We did buy friend's shirts this week, but this week we bought all the salute to military gear for the Steelers as well. So, yes. so not only did she buy four friend's shirts, we bought at least four Pittsburgh Steelers shirts. Yes. Yeah, so we, we were bad. And we went to the Beach Boys last night. We bought their stuff too. So we are t-shirt heavy. Hey, we, let me tell you what. If you have a chance to go see the Beach Boys, go see the Beach while, Boys. While they're still breathing, go. There's three left, they and they did a great so, job. And they so and they good. do such a good job at our local Civic Center. The sound was so good, and they did a great oh job. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it was right so there. Good. Every seat's good. We sat in the highest I've ever seen. was the like, back row of the yeah. balcony. Yeah. And you can hear and see just as well up there as anywhere. It was so fun. It was fun. really good. Benson and them are doing a fabulous job at our Civic Center. We, we've seen Kansas there. We've seen now the Beach Boys there. Yeah. Uh, they, they're bringing some first-class stuff to Marion, Illinois. But we're, we're here for season three. We want you to watch On the Dock. On the Dock with Pastor Troy. Mother Beth here. and got cold here. And Lucas in the house. And Donna sooner or later. And we're doing a Building a Stronger Church series to kick us off. That's going to be our focus for a big part of this year. And we're going to start with getting ourselves ready. Uh, to build a stronger church, we've got to get ready. And we're going to do that by focusing on a series I've done at Community Faith Church, where I pastor over the last year, called The Resistance. And I'm going to break that down and have a little more discussion with that. We're going to kind of run through the principles of that and have more dialogue here on the dock because we believe it's a. a it, if you want to watch the more fuller sermon, go back and watch uh, at the beginning of Ash Wednesday uh, last year. And I started it for the Linton series. And I, I, I'm i still in the resistance series at this time of the year. I'm, I'm in a whole another subset of it, like four subsets away. And it, it's going to carry the whole year of this year uh, at Community of A Church at different pieces. And we're going to be giving some of that to you on the dock. And in between that, we're going to be doing some fun stuff. But so building a stronger church series, we're going to start off by getting ourselves in shape to be the church. And today in our finale, not, finale is not the right word, in our premiere, I mean, our season premiere, we are going to go to rule one, which is part one in the seven part training camp series. Uh, we're going to get into it right now and and go there. Mother Beth, you ready to do it? Ready. You ready? Colt, ready. You, you, if you're re ready or not, here we come. Right? You ready? ready. You ready? Okay. All right. Well, let's get into this and let me lay this out. Hey, I, I, you know what I have? I do have a video. Because if you watch the church, Lucas, Lucas is it, it. Lucas got married and left staff here. He's still executive uh, directing us here for on the dock, and we appreciate that. And he's training people, kind of sharing that load and stuff. He's our senior consulting and executive director now. He's moved up in the world. He's very high, very, a lot of credits and stuff. We have but, a video. Yeah, we, no, no. I'm just gonna. I'm be ready for this. Just stand by. He, he did bumpers for me. This is one of the last bumpers he did for me. He did, did two. You did two, right? Yeah. Yeah, the one with Jesus walking was you too, right? Yeah, so we'll see about those. I did. I put the bumper in here like I did last year in case I have to call for something. I can say, we're going to run the bumper while I cough it out. So, But I'm going to show the bumper one time to, to just pay tribute because it's thunderous. I mean, it's thunders. And it's going to give you a feel of what you're going to get out of this season three premiere. Get ready for this video. Ready, Colt? Fire. I used to always walk over Bitch. that and no, no, it did it. It did a double. It did a double. Oh. It did a double. 
I used to walk on it, and then he had this thing where it comes back and gets you, kind of like in those shows where you think you're safe, and then the, then the, the prehistoric yeah. thing grabs you. I we're we're in rule like one that. of training camp, and we're going to get started. The scripture for our focus in training camp is the whole training camp. Everything we do with the resistance, the core of it is rooted in this text, James 4, 7 and through eight. Uh, if you're driving your car, don't stop and read the Bible. You'll wreck. But if you're sitting at home, you can read it with us, but we have it up on the screen. If you're watching on Spotify, iTunes, <laughs> you just got to listen. Here we go. James four, seven through eight. So humble yourselves before God, resist the devil. He will flee, resist the devil and he will flee from you. We're going to teach you how to resist the devil in this series. And we're going to start with training camp. We're not going to expect you to go out and fight the devil this week. We're going to spend six or seven weeks giving you principles so you can build up your strength so you can resist him in the real fight. Come close to God and come and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. We're going to help you get closer to God, come closer, him come closer to you. We're going to help you get your hands and your heart right. And we're going to make sure that you get rid of any divided loyalty because God doesn't want to share. God wants you. So we're going to get you ready to be the resistance. You're going to be God's standard. You're going to be the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego of this day and this hour. You're going to be able to stand up and make a difference for your family, for yourself, for your friends. You're going to be able to be a witness in your community, in your school, wherever you're listening to this, in your senior citizens organization. And whether you're in the United States or you're listening to us in Liberia, you're listening to us in Thailand, other places around the world that listen to us, you're going to be able to stand up for Jesus Christ. And we're going to equip you with that. But we're going to start off with training camp. Training camps, before you go out and play your first game, it's what you do to get ready. So we're in training camp right now, and let's get started with our training camp. Beth, you ready for training camp? I don't know. My knees hurt today. Your knees hurt today. Well, we we'll had to get you in the locker room, get you some taped up, get you on some, get you some drugs, get you some steroids, and get yeah. you get you get you fired up. Now, in in training camp, one of the most important things is you have to start getting stretched out. You have to start getting loosened up. You have to start getting worked out. And so, one of the things we talk about in football, I coached football for about twenty plus years, played football forever, and. Uh, they have a thing called you stretch out. And some coaches use uh, basic stretching like you learn. Some coaches use isometrics. Isometrics both stretch out and then they give resistance. So you're, you're going to stretch like if you were to lean over to your hamstring. And then uh, resistance means you push back. So if you're going to lean down to touch your toe, then you're going to lean down to touch your toe and somebody's going to put pressure on your back and you're going to push back against their hand as you try to raise up. So you're not just going to stretch out. You're going to resist back. So the muscle has power both ways. Uh, you see a lot of guys in the NFL today, every player that I know is either tearing their Achilles or tearing their hamstring or pulling their groin right now. Every team. Yeah. I saw yesterday, again, a whole string of people saying why. What's well, easy. The football players called the NFL players will become flag football players. In the preseason, they don't hit each other hardly at all. They're they afraid just, to get hurt before. They don't want to get hurt, concussion worry. So season. they're playing tag football all preseason. So when you're playing tag football preseason, what happens is you run up and go, ooh, you're it. And, and, and you touch them, and, and there's no effort then they get in the game and they got to earn their 120 million dollars and then they go like bulldozers full yeah. full speed and here's this guy ready. coming at you like a tractor trailer truck you know and so to stop that tractor trailer truck you got to hit that tractor trailer truck and the problem is you've been going oh you're yet touch you know and now you've got to hit them and when you hit them you got to put the thing in four-wheel drive and you got to kick it up and the rpms raise up and those legs that have not really hit anybody now have to hit maximum resistance and what happens is you didn't hit any deer in preseason. You didn't do isometrics and resistance. You didn't, you didn't just push it. You didn't get pushed back on. Right. And so what happens, the hamstring rips, the groin tears, the Achilles tendon breaks, and we have nothing but that going on in the NFL right now. And Nothing but that you're done. because they don't want to hit and you've got to hit in preseason because you simulate how you play is how you're going to practice and is how you're going to perform. And then you go out there and try to perform at hundred percent. When you practice at 12%, you're going to get hurt. Yeah. Your body doesn't build up tolerance. So in isometric resistance, we do things like pull-ups for us. That could be prayer life in the spiritual realm, in the, in, in, in the, in the, in the workout realm, push-ups or devotional life. And study life, you know, how you study your word. For, for in, in the workout world, that's your push-ups, your pull-ups, your prayer life. Uh, let's go on to chin-ups, your chin-ups. You know, chin-ups, you pull up. That's your that's your isometric, your resistance is the ease and back down. Well, that's your fasting. <laughs> learning. Dropping back. Yeah, you can just fall <laughs> off it. Uh, in, in the church world, we tithe, we give our offerings. Well, that could be your sit-ups, you know. So, so isometrics has all kinds of things, jumping jacks. You, 
you know, you go one way and you're back down, you're up and you're back down. So that's service inside the body. It can be other things like your up downs, our worship life. And it can be even like doing squats, deep knee squats. That's our mission life. How we, how we reach out all these, what we call exercises, strengthen our muscles, all these things that we're talking about, spiritual disciplines, prayer life, devotional life, fasting, all these things, missions, worship life, tithing service inside the body. They are what make our body ready to be the church. That's, that's what God's looking for. And he's not looking for it when people are watching. He's looking for it in your daily workout so that when you're really challenged and stressed, you're ready. And, you know, I think the key is to understand, church, uh, friends that own the dock, listen, we gather around this table so we can have conversations to propel us off the dock and out to the deep. We are in a time right now in the United States, you know, we're right now, uh, I'll date us a little bit, and you know, you maybe listen to this years in advance or whatever, but right now the Hamas is real thing, or is there things going off? And we're in a time where our nation's divided because people want to support it. Christian people want to support Israel because Israel's God's people. You don't want to stand against that, you lose. Um, but then all these people are, you know, all the woke people are like, we got to stand behind Hamas. Hamas is victims here. Hamas is hiding their army and their military behind. We uh, Israel last week blew up several ambulances in, in the Gaza Strip. People are like, oh my God, they blew up ambulances. They were troop carriers. They're using ambulances for troop carriers. They're, 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 they're hiding their weaponry under hospitals. They're hiding their weaponry in old folks' homes. They, 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 no boundaries. And so, so we're in a world that's really upside down right now, and we're divided. Our college kids are like, well, I love the Quran. You know, I, I heard a girl yesterday on a show say how she was Jewish, but she was leaving that because she found beauty in the Quran, and she found that God's word, the old Hebrew word, was harsh toward women, and she thought the Quran would give women a whole new life. I said, you need to read the Quran fuller, okay. and you need to pay attention to I that. I heard that, so I, I have never I will show you the clips. Okay, I have never personally read the Quran. I've read but it all. Do they talk about <laughs> Oh yeah. how women I sent you the article. Didn't I send you an article last night? I sent you an article where Iranian woman stoned to death in her village no. because she had okay. been caught having an affair and the whole village came out to watch him it's happily all, stone her. It's all of that in the Quran. The yes, absolutely. Okay, Your rights so to how do that. Is, how did that Girl, translate that as something beautiful. Well, she read the first few chapters and thought it's a kind of see a lot of a lot or of it. Somebody told her a lot of it. A lot of it sounds like proverbs. So there's nice, cute proverbs and there's cute sections. The deeper you go into, it, the harder core it gets. Okay. You know, and she hasn't so read she through it has all not yet. Read nah, it. Okay. She, and it's almost impossible to understand. So it's like proverbs. A lot of it is, and they jump in time so that you have it like pre Muhammad, then Muhammad tells you revelation, then you have a later Muhammad, and you can be reading one chapter and read somewhere within 20 years of him writing stuff you know it can jump around time wise and, and it's chaotically written yeah. but I why because we it all know what yeah. the law what the sharia law is yeah it's a control law right. i mean the Jew, Jew, jewish has a law too a hebrew law and it requires things and and it, it would deal very harsh with adultery in the bible and, and, and you could have things like stoning so the old testament allows for that but for her to say that a woman's good i mean we looked at going over in the Middle East to, to work, Beth and I did. It would have changed Beth's life where we would have gone. She would have had to cover herself in public from head to toe. And it would have been okay for, it would be okay for a man just to pull his wife out of the car and beat her in public. Matter of fact, you, you draw a popular crowd, you know. For somebody to say what they're saying is, is unbelievable. To know what's happening, to know Boko Haram uh, in, in Ukimi's uh, territory I talked about yesterday, you know, those, those 100 or 200 girls are still missing. They were taken. You know, life means little to nothing. We're, what I'm saying well, is. Because they don't value they it. They don't value it. Because yeah. to them, giving your life is the ultimate sacrifice. Well, it's the only way to get past the, you, the, the, the Quran requires such a discipline to be saved that it's, it's, it's impossible. Right. So the, 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 the pass, the pass, uh, what is it? Get out of jail and pass that and, and get a home run. Pass, go and get to Yeah. Yeah. Sure. The way to do that is to be martyred. And then if you get martyred, you guarantees. automatic, you get like a free pass, no matter how bad you were, you know, you get in. If, if Colt did terrible things, but then he martyrs himself, then Colt, you get in. So you can, you, you can, you can, if you blow up a bunch of babies and, and widows and orphans that are Christians, you, you get to get in instantly. And, but, and even if you're a bad guy, you get in because jihad means you were a successful holy warrior. And now you have, you know, a, a, a whole treasure waiting for you. 
we're not in exile like Daniel Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are. Well, is what I want to say is we're kind of living in a country that's kind of exiled Christianity. So we're kind of living in our own country. And we're in a time when we're not going to be taken somewhere else so much, but we're right here, right here has become elsewhere. And for those of us that are Christians, we're going to have to learn how to um, show people God's way and, and distinguish our way from the world's way right where we are. And we're in a society where it's, I want to say this, that that's flipped from godly to worldly. In God we trust was what we put on our money, but we don't believe that anymore. And we've gone from being a God-fearing majority to being, as Christians now, we, we are looked down. We are behaviorally looked down. We have a new speaker of the house, uh, Mike Johnson, and, and he's being criticized in all main media because he is a, quote, Bible-believing Christian. He said, if you want to know what I believe, he said this very simply, read the Bible. I believe that. And all major media has done nothing but criticize him for that statement. Not now, just criticize Oh, him, oh, they're, they're after him. Was, and, and then he stated that my wife and I are in a covenant of marriage, a biblical covenant of marriage. We're committed. They're like, oh. So that means you're not for LGBTQ marriage? No, we're in a biblical covenant of marriage. We believe in biblical marriage. Do you have a problem with LGBTQ? No, people can do whatever they want, he said. But I believe in a biblical covenant of marriage. He didn't push his things on anybody else. Just he said what I believe. I have lots of people that I care about that, that don't follow that way. But as for me and my wife and our house, we serve the Lord. Oh, you're barbaric. I mean, we wouldn't have even thought about that. Our courtrooms, Colt, you won't know that you're too young for this, but our courtrooms and, and, and Mama's time and, 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 and Jerry's time and our time, our courtrooms have the Ten Commandments on the wall. Uh, there, there was a day when, when we started our school day, when we were young, they would pray over the microphone in school before football games. They would, they would pray. Pastor would pray. Somebody would pray. And then all of a sudden a, a pe person could pray. Now you can't do any prayer. You know, the 10 commandments were chiseled off the walls and moved out. And our nation has gone from that in like, almost like, well, in my lifetime, I've seen it completely disappear. And now when that speaker was elected, his first action, all the other speakers, when they would be nominated, they would run out and tell the press, I'm the guy. He said, I'm not going out. He says, bring them in here. The first thing I'd like to do, would somebody be willing to get around me and pray for me so I can make a good decision? And his first act was to have the Tennessee guy uh, 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 from our, my home state uh, prayed for him. And the whole you see the whole house laying hands on the new speaker, the, the Republican house. And they flamboyed that because he dared make the media come in and watch the, the, the group pray for him that he would make good decisions to be a good leader. We used to pray that we would have a godly leader, pray for that. And we're just kind of upside down on that now, aren't we? Yeah. It's upside down completely. So, so let's talk about rule one. I, I, wanna, I wanna just kind of be excited for, I mean, just, I'm watching our time here. I've got my meter. We didn't, I know we didn't set up a clock, but I do have a clock here, so. But um, we're training Colt. Sometimes he puts a clock up for me I, and then I ignore it, but and then we go, <laughs> then we send it. but I have one too, but rule one, let's get to rule one. Let's, we're going to give you some rules to help get you ready for contact. Okay. These are pre-contact rules. Uh, how many people out there? I don't know. You are Trekkies, you're star Trekkies, you know, the Federation and their biggest foe was the Borg. We are Borg. That's kind of what we feel like we're in today. You know, you will be woke or you Christians will be assimilated. You'll become a part of the collective. What is another great one? Another famous one, Star Wars. The Empire versus what? There we go. What are they called? The rebels. They were the rebels. They were the resistance. Here's another one. This is out of our lifetime. We remember this. This is way back in the ages, the U.S. versus the Nazis. You know? Yeah. Captain America was born out of that battle. You know, you go to Marvel Comics, which is not real, but this, that one's real. See, these other two are make-believe, but that one was real. You know, you have, in our lifetimes, we, we have stories and we have realness. We have things, the story of, of the battles of good and, ego, e, e, good and evil. And all these are, if you think about it, they're all sagas. And sagas reveal a time where there was a normal. If you, like, take Star Trek, Star Trek's normal. Then the Borg come and, and they, they bring a new culture, a new... Um, Quran, so to speak, a new way to assimilate you. Uh, the empire had a new way to assimilate you. Nazi Germany wanted to 
change and rewrite the hard drive so that only perfect people and perfect people were the people that were like the people that said, well, we're the perfect people. You always want to know who the perfect people are. The perfect people are always the people that are talking about being perfect. And we find out they're not so perfect. They're just narrow minded. You know what I'm saying? And in every case, the option was you either have to surrender and be assimilated in all these stories, or you have to be destroyed. And that would cause what we would call a resistance, whether it's Star Trek fighting back, whether it's the rebels fighting back, whether it's America getting in and pushing back on the Nazis and helping to liberate the Jews, you know, to, you know, to, to, you know, the almost completely exterminated Jews who had no country. It's so funny. We got people today in colleges against the Jews and they're down to 8.5 million people because they were Holocausted already once in the last hundred years. And now we're watching the, the Ishmaelites all around them threaten to Holocaust them again. We're letting it happen and again. We had go back season two if you get a chance. Go watch Sandra Colombo. We had Sandra Colombo, and it was one of the best interviews we did last year. Go watch her two part episode on Lives Lived Well. She still do. I think she's still doing well. Uh, she is a a Holocaust survivor from Italy. She's not a, a Jew, but she grew up in, in in Italy, and she watched the Nazis come in. She watched what happened to people. She watched how the young boys were brainwashed into doing things to their own people, turning in their own families. And she says, she said, I'm just going to tell you guys, I'm watching what happened to young people in my childhood happened to the young people today. You people better wake up. She says, I hate to live this again in my lifetime. And she gave us a good warning. And she says, I've been there, done that. Don't want to do it again. Wake up. Um, and the, in all these stories that we talk about Star Trek, Star Trek and Star Wars and, and Nazi that there's a resistance that rises up and pushes back. And in our Bible, we witness some of the same stuff. So let me get biblical with this for a minute. Uh, in the Bible, we witness one of the greatest events of, of people. God is the Exodus era when, when the people are under oppression, uh, in the Bible, you've got, uh, Joseph goes down and he gets taken, you know, he, he gets sold off by his brothers and stuff, but, but ends up being a blessing and he ends up being the deliverer of his people when they have to come there during, during the hard times and, and Pharaoh and, and, and under the current Pharaoh, uh, the Jews get settled in and Israel settles in, but 400 years later, they forget about all those deals. And the Jews had grown and prospered so much in the time of Moses's life. Moses was actually raised by Pharaoh because he, at the, the, the Jewish boys had gotten so threatening. They were killing all the firstborn sons to keep them from uh, propagating. And Moses was actually the deliverer they were trying to get rid of, saved by the Pharaoh's daughter, uh, who saw him and picked him up like he was a like a like a pet, you know, took him in. And what's funny about the story is his mom did it to get rid of him, and mom ended up getting to wet nurse him and got paid. So it was one of the best stories in the Bible where where you see how God's hand can be at work to take in a child that would have normally died, and the mom ends up getting blessed uh, to take care of him. But if you look at this prototype resistance story. It's just filled with it. You have a you have a, the shaking off the of Egypt where Moses has to say, "Hey, God, God says, let my people go," and and they kind of fight through all those battles, and then then they leave finally after all the story and all the plagues and all that, and they have to shake off de Egyptian, de world, and they go out in the wilderness and they they have troubles with it. They keep thinking, "Well, this is tough becoming our own culture and our own people," and they keep wanting to go back. And they go, "Well, we don't go back to Egypt. We'd rather be slaves, and at least we could eat watermelon." You know, you know, we were eating cucumbers, you know, and, but they were slaves. I mean, they were working sun up to sundown and, and they, they were all of a sudden making that sound romantic. It was like that Jewish girl saying the Quran so beautiful. I want to go to the Quran. You need to remember what you were doing in the Quran In the Quran, you were worth nothing. You were, you were somewhere at the level of cattle you know, beaten and, and not respected. And you need to get the romanticism off this and look at reality. And, 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 and then God meets the Jews out at Mount Sinai and they, they take on a new covenant and then there's a pushback. So God asks them, will they do it? And they commit to doing it. And, and then we find out a few people can't handle 40 days of Moses being gone. Yeah. Right. Colt, this is a good check. I'm fixing to cough. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he did, he did a good job. <laughs> wow. I just want to give you a warning. Sometimes I'll just skate. Like, yeah, you know. All right. I get Because it's bad if I cough and this is hot. So, so, so or he'll turn around and, and I'll, I'll start to turn. He expects yeah. me to cough. Yeah. It, yeah. And if you I'm see like, me coughing, 
go to her my like go to her camera go to her camera now yeah go to her camera like like, like what am and I kill my life <laughs> yeah. what am I supposed all right we're practicing about? that was a practice right there we're, we're season one season one we had to get lucas trained season three lucas is training new people the next generation <laughs> had to train beth too. yeah but, but but this is what god did he took them out and he had to train them he had to give them the rules they broke the rules before he got off the mountain the first time they said go up and get the rules moses we'll do it before he got back they had already built a calf out of gold gold they got from their enemies that god gave them going out they had already turned it from a precious gold to an idol people are pitiful <laughs> that went south in 40 days. That, yeah. I mean, that is so quick. They mounted a resistance. Moses cried out. They reclaimed the lost sheep. And this led to the next generation having to wait for their parents to die so they could get a chance to go in. What do we take away from all this? What, what do we take away from all of this? I mean, we really have to think about uh, this story. And, uh, and I, I think we need to understand to regain our Christian community that we're in, in the region, state, nation, and world that we have today. We have to start by personally preparing ourselves to be God's resistance, to be God's people, to be faithful beyond 40 days, to, to, to let our yeses be yeses and our noes be no. How, do, how does all this start? It starts by learning how to be holy, learning how to be pure, and learning how to be true to God. And who alone is worthy of our worship and obedience and trust? Well, that's Jesus. It starts with a simple, but a, but what I'm, what I believe it's got to be, heart and soul deep. Heart and soul deep means both the heart's got to be there and the mind's got to be there. Heart and soul, the body's got to be there, and it's got to be like to your core, and it's got to be a declaration that I surrender all. They, they said, God, send Moses up there. We'll live by your rules, and it wasn't so heart and soul deep that they could get past forty days. They were already working on a backup plan, thinking about electing leaders to take them back to Egypt to get the cucumbers and to get the watermelons and to go back working for Pharaoh. Even though they saw God, listen, let me go back to the picture if I can. Listen, these people saw Moses split the sea by the power of God and bury the armies on their behalf and they were all ready to go back to the man whose army drowned. That is just a, bad spirit i mean i mean that is just to me how do you get there we all go god they had to be idiots they had to be idiots we do stuff like that too though. no everybody's doing it today half our nation is, is rooting for hamas yeah half our nation is like we want to live like an egyptian we want to be an ishmaelite we want to be a muslim yeah. you know the holocaust what holocaust what holocaust the, the jews need to have a dual state there'll be no dual state the other state would want more of the state and more of the state there's a spiritual battle going on there can only be one winner and that's god's people yeah and the devil will fight until the battle's over and when the battle's over is when jesus says it's over yep. our head coach guys our head coach our head coach is god now here's what i want to get across let me explain this P powerful armies powerful teams um uh people that can do things for god if you want to be a part of a resistance, the church is strong. Building uh, stronger churches is our focus right now. How do you build a stronger church? You've got to individually commit yourself first because it's the corporate 11 on a football team or the corporate body of a church that when they come together, become more effective. So the, the church just can't be strong. It's got to be made of collectively strong people that work together and, and the hearts and souls of one plus two plus three plus four plus five equal a body that's got strong heart and strong soul. And so... Strong teams are not formed in playoff games. Strong teams are formed not in the crunch games. Strong teams are formed in the preseason pull-ups and push-ups and set-ups and getting their body trained to be ready for the battle later. It's in the boot camp. When you go to the two-a-days that you have in soccer, you have in football, you have preseason baseball, it's where you're working through hit, hitting a single, catching a single, fielding and throwing. Yeah, It's when you're working on form tackling or our, our basic uh, dribbling skills for ba uh, for soccer, for, for basketball, spending hours on the free throw line, shooting and learning how to get that right and to work on your dribble and all that stuff. It's in your preparation and the routine. And it's in the, in the preseason games where you get to try out some new things because the games don't count. I hate preseason football because they don't count. But preseason football does count for the guys that end up getting cut or making the team. That's where they show you whether they've got the stuff to be a Pittsburgh Steeler, to be on the team, to make the franchise. 
and it's in the preseason where the team or body comes together and they get ready and they become a, a, a an army, so to speak, uh, a team or army of God. And it is in the training camp where the team or the body or the army becomes the resistance that can actually make a real stand against a real devil and a real enemy and, and make a difference. Our head coach is God and we have one field commander and that quarterback is Jesus. However we play it. Yep. And it all starts with a simple declaration that I surrender all you, you've got to give up philosophy of individual and support the coach. Because if, if every player has their own way, they want to play, you, you'll be pulling in so many different directions, but, but a good coach will, will, will do drills and practice and, and, and stretching and calisthenics and things that will unite together. When you go watch a, if you ever go watch an NFL or any kind of football practice like that, but I use NFL, use Steelers, Beth and I go to Steelers training camp. You will see from the beginning, from the type of stretches they're doing, They'll, they'll, they'll stretch certain ways. They'll, they'll do warm up drills, certain kind of passing. You'll see them doing out passes, out passes, out passes, corner passes, corner passes. You'll see certain kind of that. You'll see certain kind of blocking over here. They'll be doing uh, sh what they call short, quick pass drop blocking because you can fire out like one yard, like it feels like a run play, but they, but they, you can't go downfield or you'd be a legal man downfield. So you, you fire out a shot and then you quick pass block. So you see that a lot on goal line or real short yardage. So it's a, it, it looks like a run coming at you, so it freezes the linebackers. The, 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 the back squad and run a corner to the corner of the end zone, and they throw that ball, try to dunk it in the corner. You'll see them working on the individual routes over here. You'll see the receivers doing this. Then you'll see you'll see the, the seven uh, backs in that come together and do more of it. And next thing you know, you see 11 on 11, and you see them running the actual plays against a defense, and they're, and they're doing it. They get four plays to score. The next quarterback gets four plays to score. Next quarterback gets four plays to score. And that's how they find out who the quarterback's going to be, which team is first, second, third, is who can make those plays in those critical red zone plays. And what they're doing is every coach that's out there, whether it's the quarterback coach, whether it's running back coach, whether it's the receivers coach, they're all coaching individual players in their aspect. So as the team comes together, they're all working, yes, on their own skills and gifts, but they're working to accomplish one thing, the play the coach called. And the quarterback, Jesus, knows where everybody's going to be. And if it executes well, you get a touchdown. That is the exact same for the church of Jesus Christ. We've got God's word. We've got what God wants us to be obedient to. We've got what Jesus has commissioned us. He, he called us to, to go forth and baptize and teach and, and be a spiritual dom, 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 dominance out there. And he wants us to work through it. And we have to do that. And how do we do that resistance? Once again, it's in our prayer. This is not fancy stuff. This is two a day stuff. This is everyday stuff. This is not what your coach is watching you do. This is what you do before you even get to the practice. You did your pull ups. You were in your weight room. You, you did your devotional study. You did your fasting. You looked at your playbook. You know, you, you've been doing some work and in the church, it's tithes and your offerings and your worship life and your mission life and your fasting and all that you do your basics. So your body is used to the normality of being a Christian. And then you get to go out and you play the game mm -hmm. and your body has muscle memory. And when you get out there and the, and the coach starts running that whole play, you've been running that pass where you catch it in the corner. The quarterback's been used to that. And all of a sudden it kind of comes together. There, there's some really good texts out there. Gosh, I love some of them on this rock. I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Matthew uh, uh, 16, 18. I love that text. If we build it on him, we're promised that we can win. Our coach is a winner. Our quarterback is a winning quarterback. We had, I mean, Brady was a good quarterback. Roethlisberger is a good quarterback. But Jesus Christ is our quarterback. He is an excellent quarterback. And if we're going to resist and we're going to reverse, let me go further than that. If we're going to reverse the degradation of where we are as a church, where our society is, what we're seeing in our world, state, nation, and even in the world, then we have to put ourselves in shape to be game day changers. And you don't get to be a game day changer in the middle of the game. You get to be a game day changer in preseason, in training camp. So that's why we're starting this season off, uh, not like how to get out there and kill the devil today. We're trying to talk about what you need to be doing in your life right now, right now, to be ready to be effective because I, I'm not an end time preacher. I'm a be ready all the time preacher. You have to understand what we're seeing is getting to be more and more like birthing pains that the Bible talks about. I mean, maybe it's another thousand years, 
but it would have to start something like this mm -hmm. with Israel being surrounded on all sides by people that want to kill them. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says at some point in time, they'll be all but destroyed by the man of lawlessness. And then the king himself will step foot down and that'll be the end. You could see that happening any day. We had no Jerusalem before 1940. I know Israel before 1949. We had no Jerusalem before three years ago when they made Jerusalem the capital officially. Right. You know, we have no temple yet for daily sacrifice, but the mound is there. We know where it goes. They, they claim that all the components have been built, including the stones, are in warehouses. You could see this conflict getting so bad that they would push the Islam dome off the rock, build the temple, start the sacrifice, and then any time the seven-year tribulation could begin. We couldn't have been there three years ago. Right. Who's going to do the sacrifice? The high priest. How do you know who the high priests are? 10 years ago, they discovered the DNA of the high priest of Israel. And they have been testing the Israelites for years now. And they know which Israelite men have the high priest gene of Aaron. Hmm. They won't put it out. You know why? Uh, you'll love this, Lucas. Kill them. They won't put it out because they would be killed. So it's, 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 one, it's a higher kept secret than their nuclear arsenal is. Yeah. Because if people knew who the Aaronic priests were, uh, the others would try to have them killed. So there, I mean, you can see it's, to, but we, it's, it's more, you can see we need to get ready. So we got a little time here, but we need to do our training. Don't they even have the, the red heifers. Oh, they, they have it all Bread. ready to didn't go. They, didn't they breed them somehow? Like, oh yeah. They, they've got the, the red heifer. There's of. all kinds of things, and they, they've had sighting of the red heifer already yeah. and that. Now, let me say this. Luke 10 is a glorious. I'm going to wrap up with this. Luke 10 is glorious. As Jerusalem and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home, and her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening. Hey, Martha's in there distracted by the big dinner. She's working, cooking. She was uh, she, she was me to... Uh, Big dinner she was to uh, to Jesus. And Lord, doesn't it seem unfair that my sister just sits there at your feet while I'm in here doing all the work? That's how it. And here, here's Jesus' response. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Folks, we're in a time right now where we need to not disregard our relationship with Jesus. We need to exercise. We need to work it in every aspect, our quiet time, our prayer life, our tithing, our, our participation in church, our inside the church service work, our outside the church mission work. We need to be building up ourselves and getting ourselves in place. And when the Lord is present, we need to be present. What is required for these hours ahead, these days ahead? How do we get ready to make a difference in the season that's coming? What is required? I think to be the resistance, we can't run counter. We can't resist him. So our only option is what uh, we have to unconditionally and completely surrender. We need to be, we, listen, church, we need, if you're out there on the dock, we need, I'm a pastor, we need people with Martha's in the church. We need people to do work in the church. We, we do, but we've got to do it with the hearts and the spirits for worship like Mary. You, you can't forsake the one. You've got to do the work out of a deep relationship and soul connection with the Lord. Don't lose your purpose. Don't lose your reason behind it. And, and if you can stay focused on that, then you become the rebellion. You become the resistance. You become the, the star fleet against the Borg. You become the, the, the one that stands against the Nazi regime. You become the people of Israel, the church that stands up against what evil is trying to do. And, um, you know, we, we've got to do the right thing. So let me wrap up this episode. We're going to have six of these rules, and then we're going to have a, an incredible graduation uh, wrap up for training camp. And if you, I don't need you to get through all six. Get through all six. If you want to go deeper into this, go find uh, the preaching. It would be from 2023. Go find uh, the Sunday, the first Sunday in Lent and you will find uh, this more in depth and more deeper here. But let, let me just go ahead and end with you and give you a real good clarity on uh, rule number one. Rule number one is simply this. I surrender all. You've got to give up your identity and become a part of the team of Jesus. You've got to play your role. You've got to use your gifts, but you've got to listen to the commander, our coach, and you've got to get around the quarterback, Jesus, and then let the gifts of the church unite, and that's what the Holy Spirit will do for us. And you've just got to start by laying down your life. The Bible says there's no greater love than to lay down your life for your fellow brothers. And the only way we're going to see the turnaround in this world is for, for, for rebels that are willing to resist. And resistance um, is not futile. You know, the rebellion tells you resistance is futile. 
But in all these shows, you ever notice Star Trek always wins? You always never know that, that at the end, uh, Chewbacca gets another medal. You ever notice that we aren't saying I'll Hitler today? You ever notice that Israel is still breathing? As long as our God's on the throne, the one we surrender to is able to be our champion and to keep that which we've entrusted to him. What do you think, Beth? You think, you think, you think we, this is a good way to get started? People just kind of need to make a commitment to surrender all? Yep, I do too. It's the key. I think it's absolutely the key. Let me, let me pray for everybody out there, and I just want to pray. If you're with us, don't close your eyes if you're driving because you're right off the road. It's bad. I don't want you to sue on the dock or anything like that. Keep your eyes open. It's okay. The Lord know you're praying. But let me just pray for you as we wrap up this episode. We'll be back with you in a little bit for rule two. But let's just pray. Father, I, I just wherever we are right now, Lord, we just all want to take a time and just say, I repent. And we humble ourselves before your leadership and we accept your grace and your mercy and love. And Father, as we go in through these training camp rules, help us to learn how in, in this season to resist the devil, to practice our bodies, to subject ourselves through the different disciplines that we talked about in the name of Jesus Christ and in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, would you cause the devil to flee from us, from our families, from our presence, from our individualities, Lord? Would you allow us to come together? Lord, I pray that we would come close to you and you would come close to us. Father, help us all to be washed before you by your grace. And I ask you, Lord, to purify our hearts by your mercy. Father, I pray that there would be uh, no division found amongst the body of Christ, that we would walk together and walk in loyalty, and we would help live our lives before you in such a way that others could see Christ. Father, we choose to live for you, Lord. Help those that make that choice to succeed. Be with them, Lord, and help us to be your resistance in this hour and this day against the enemy. And help us to lift up the name uh, and the way of Jesus in this day and this hour in such a way that we'll see revival and renewal. And Lord, we declare with no shame and no reservation that we surrender all. So Lord, help us to do that, to get that out of the way. And as we surrender all to you, Lord, we have a chance now to build on that. And from that surrender, we can begin to build a godliness, Lord, and a set of characters, Lord, that'll help us in the day when we have to fight that battle of that enemy face to face. Bless us, Lord. Thank you so much for being with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's been pretty good stuff. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. And uh, we're going to, that's just rule one, it's just a small taste of what we're going to be doing this season. And we're going to be back with you real quick here on the dock with our next episode. And we'll be building a stronger church series. We'll be in rule number two. You have to find out what rule number two is. You have to come back, come back. Don't you want to know what rule number two is, Beth? Can't wait. You'll find out when you come back. Go to onthedock.org. Check us out. You can find out about past episodes and things we've talked about. Info at onthedock.org. If you've got questions, you can talk to us as well. Go to YouTube, Spotify, iTunes to watch us primarily. We've got the other channels available to you as well. Forgot to tell you in the opening, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, and Getter, our social media sites. We'd love to have questions and comments. Share some of your things about that as well. If you've got some spiritual disciplines and things and isometrics that work for you, let us know what those are. We'll share those out in the next episodes. And don't forget, hit subscribe, like, notify, tell others about the show, pass it on. We need the resistance to grow and you can help us grow by getting the word out and encouraging us as we get the word out to you. Go and be a partner. We'd love to have you as a partner. Take us on, go to my Patreon and become a partner of this show. I challenge and double dog dare you to invest in the show, help it get out there farther. That's one way you can be a part is make this, this show a tool for you to share with others, share with your kids. You know, some of them won't come to church, but they all like podcasts. Let's get this podcast out, be a partner, or you can be a sponsor of it as well. If you're in this area, you don't have a church home, Community Faith Church, we attend there and we'd love to have you at cof you can check it out at coftv.com we broadcast sunday and wednesdays 10 a.m or 6 30 and if you're in the region come on out if you're not in the region check us out or get in a bible believing church in your region if you don't have one uh, email us at info at on the doc and we'll help you find one and uh, we look forward to seeing you all out on the next episode mother beth thank you very much lucas let's get a great is cole doing okay over there Pr pretty good episode yeah 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 he's do not doing bad at all and cole how was it it was really cool. Um, it was really cool. Yeah. He has a good warm-up episode. We're just getting started with season three. Man, you'll be like an old pro soon. It won't be long. Let's rock it. Uh, let's rock it. Hey, we've sure enjoyed having you. And uh, on behalf of Mother Beth, myself, Colt, and Lucas, we'll see you soon. I'm Pastor Troy, and you've been on the dock. Get this word out to other people.